Welcome back everybody. This is not a Malazan video because it's Sunday and I just finished rereading um, The Light Brigade by Cameron Hurley and it's an absolute monster of a book and I'm here to tell you about it and why you should all go and read it. This is not a review. I can't review this kind of book. Just assume that I'll give it like a five star rating or whatever. I just think everyone should read it because it's great. And I'll try to explain some things. I hope this will be spoiler free. Um, but since I don't know what I'll be saying, I can't promise this up right now. Um, I'll, you know, if it gets spoilery, I'll try to make sure that you have enough time to click off or anything. But in general, go pick up that book. It's not that long. You can do it easily and it's important. So anyway, let's go and do this. Cheers. All right, so yeah, this is, I mean, I, I took a couple of days off. I didn't do a video yesterday or Friday either. Um, instead, since this would, would have been the weekend of Keep It True Festival, which is the most important festival for the underground metal crew and like sort of our yearly family gathering, I decided to, you know, do that on my own, on my, on my balcony and get drunk a lot and have a barbecue on my balcony and all these other really important and really stupid things. I took a day off, uh, two days off. I got myself sunburnt for the first time this year because yes, I'm German. I'm not good with the sun and stuff like that. All of that happened, but I finally finished rereading Light Brigade today and I'm like, I really want to talk about it now. <laughs> also, I finally put up pre-orders for my um, next release, which will be Oloren through through shadow and flame I'm, I'm so dumb right through shadow and flame an entire album just about gandalf and not even about his entire life but just about what happens to gandalf in little lord of the rings <laughs> and uh, it will be glorious anyway <laughs> that was not the point let's start talking about the light brigade by cameron hurley so i've been a huge fan of cameron hurley ever since i first read god's war after a kind of recommendation from Richard K. Morgan, whom I, like, he's sort of responsible for a lot of the stuff I've read this by now, and, like, when I went outside the genre, like, the fantasy and science fiction stuff, because back in the days, some authors did have blogs, and on their blogs, they actually posted, like, stuff I've read recently, or, you know, stuff like that, and Morgan was, is definitely one of those people who did that a lot and he's the kind of person who got me into um, Vandermeer's Finch and reading Thomas Pynchon and a lot of other stuff and also God's War by Cameron Hurley which I then read and I was immediately hooked I, I loved it I, I've said it before I love angry fiction and God's War is nothing if not angry and I followed her like writings ever since then and I think she's one of the most important, like, writers in the wider genre of, like, fantasy and science fiction at this point, for a bunch of reasons. She's, she has a very unique voice, um, she has very unique takes on things, she has, like, really cool world ideas for worlds and stuff, like the whole insect thing going on in, in God's War, and it's too, um, sequels and the whole plant thing going on in her world breaker saga it's you know it's all very unique and deliberately not following genre traditions and stuff like that and i appreciate that the other thing that i mostly really really appreciate about her writing is the sincerity it's like it's science fiction or it's fantasy but there's like an underlying need to put things out there like perceptions of how the world is wrong and what we should do to change it, things like that it's not it's not propaganda or anything but it's the underlying sincerity of the author can be like at least i kind of feel like i can perceive it and like read it and feel it when i read it it's like this is not someone just pursuing their craft and telling a cool story but there's someone that who wants to actually affect change through literature and this is something that i 
very much appreciate in books of all kinds. It's also why I so much appreciate the Malazan Book of the Fallen because it's a similar thing there. It's like there's it's not just a story about soldiers doing stuff. It's a story it's also a book that, you know, hopefully moves the reader in a specific way. It's not just entertainment. It's more than just entertainment in a way. And Cameron Hurley does that a lot in all her stories. I really, really enjoyed um the The Stars Are Legion, which is an amazing book and you should all go and read it anyway and then the light brigade is probably my favorite by her i kind of had issues with how she ended her world breaker trilogy i liked a lot of the themes but the ending kind of didn't you know work for me but anyway the light brigade is what she released i think last year maybe i'm maybe i've lost track of time it might have been 2019 i'm not good with these things my point is, The Light Brigade is a military science fiction novel. It's not too long. The audiobook is like 10 hours and a bit, um, which I think means like roughly 350 to 400 pages, something like that. It's military science fiction. It's extremely sleek prose. It's really well written. That's the other thing with Cameron Hurley. She just has a lot of talent. Like, you know, you can tell with people, like, writers get better with time obviously with you know practicing their craft because art is something that you also get better at by doing it a lot but Cameron Hurley has a lot of raw talent she's always had that and that comes through in all her stories you go and read that and I'm, literally the light brigade shows a lot of that it's a military sci-fi it and I'm trying to, you know, I'm not going to spoil anything, but the idea is that you have a corporate world fighting uh, Mars or like rebels on Mars. And the military technology is people are basically turned into light and sent somewhere to fight there. You know, your basic beaming technology from Star Trek, just with like a different name on it, basically. And that's sort of the, the thing. And... Um, we have that story written as a first person narrative by one of these soldiers experiencing that corporate war against um, the re rebels on Mars as the overall story. And that's that overall story is just really, really gripping. It's a it's a f really like fast read it's a page turner you go like i want to i want to find out how this shit works i want to find out how the war go goes <laughs> all of that and that's good but i want to talk about something else which i appreciate so much about which i think is the more important thing and i hope i can pull this off without spoiling anything big i mean if general world building and so forth things already spoilers to you then this is obviously not your kind of video and in that case, I'll just sum it up again. This is basically a anti-capitalist, um, feminist um, starship troopers, which is the kind of book you really want to read. It's military sci-fi dealing with a lot of issues that we in our own lives deal with. And that's great. So go read it and then come back and we talk about the other stuff. All right. And from here on out, I'm going to talk about themes and what I really like about this book. All right, here we go. I just said it, anti-capitalist feminist, and those things are really important in that story, but only sort of. Like, they, they are what drives the thing, but what I, like, first and foremost appreciate about this story is the idea that we not only need to break out of our current system, like current systems of uh, capitalism built on unending growth and so forth, but that like we not only that we need to, but also that we can. The, the, the possibility is an important thing. I've, I've spoken about this before at some point, the idea when I was talking about Neil Stevenson and his idea that only dystopian science fiction kind of narrows down our visions for the future and makes it more difficult for people to actually come up with um, solutions to problems or changes because we kind of are settled in that you know 
in that very like specific mindset. And it's one of those things that when you list, when you read a lot of science fiction, you realize outside of someone like Ian M. Banks, who is obviously hugely important, and you all should go and read more Ian M. Banks. Um, outside of that, a lot of like science fiction, even like positive science fiction that deals with um, positive aspects of our future and is not just all dystopian, uh, like almost none of that actually thinks outside our current system of capitalism of um yeah and that's that's uh, that's a problem i'm not here to tell you that capitalism is wrong i mean yeah it is but that's not the point the point is even if you in if you are someone who thinks that capitalism is the best way of like organizing the world it would still be important to have these alternatives to look at them and think about them and the way that the way how capitalism and these things have actually taken over the science fiction field so that we don't even see like really alternative science uh, models of society in a lot of science fiction anymore is in this way like a problematic thing. Now, does Cameron Hurley do something like about that? Yes and no. Her world in the Light Brigade is a harsh, like, um, capitalist society. You have, um, it's, everything is ruled through capitalist, through the capitalist sense. You have these huge mega corporations instead of countries, something that we can, you know, trace back to cyberpunk, basically. And it's sort of like thought to the, like to the logical end of a conclusion of that with people having residency or citizenship or not none at all being disenfranchised and or just she calls them ghouls but you know all of that is in there she doesn't give us another option per se but what she does is very clearly positively point out that we need to find that other option <laughs> the question of should we you know Basically, the point is that sometimes a system is so fundamentally flawed that we can't change it from within the system by, you know, trying to make little changes to a better thing. Sometimes we just actually need to step out there and take down the entire system and start anew with a new thing, which we need to figure out. And that's, I feel, the positive thing about it is, like, that she's very clear about, like, we don't know, she doesn't know how that goes, and the, the our narrator doesn't, narrator doesn't know how, how that system should work. But it's the idea of actually trying to figure it out, doing something, being, I don't know, brave enough, maybe, or whatever, to actually say, like, maybe... Maybe there's another option. Maybe we can actually do something. We as people, as human beings, when we, you know, actually go back and think about what makes us human, what makes us human and like be aware of the value that comes with just being a person, being human and taking, putting that front and center and trying to build up something new from there. Because this is not the story, that's the point, this is not the story, the Light Brigade is not the story of how to build a better place. This is the story of how to learn and figure, how to realize that the place, that the situation you're in is fucked and you need to sort of be brave enough to actually take all of that down, take all the certainties in your life away, take all of that shit down and start afresh and figure out things anew and concentrate on the things that really matter. And I really appreciate that about it. And she's she's very aware of that. Like when you when you go to the end, it's like, I I guess you all wanted more answers, but this is not about answers. This is about asking the questions and realizing that we need to ask these questions. So I I very much appreciate that aspect of it. All right, the other thing is um, the idea of closed circles and going in circles. Now, this is sort of spoilery. I already said that, but you know. But the point is, now within the story, you have all these people that jump to places, and sometimes they jump also in time. And they realize 
that that corporate war between these different corporations that go for consolidation, try to become just one corporation to rule them all, as she says, in a way. You know, all of that um, is obviously like a metaphor for how we do our, run our lives because we go and do the same things over and over again. We can't get out of this rat race, basically. We go in circles. And the idea of that war is just a metaphor for daily life in that regard, I guess. And once again, the answer is to step back and break out of that circle and try try something new, try something fresh. <clears throat> Another thing that I really enjoyed about the book is um, how all these like current problems that we have with our world, like, you know, climate change being a result of human predation on the planet, of how human suffering is something that is um, beneficial to capitalist, consumer capitalist um, corporations in a way, and how they don't care, how how human how human beings are just you know numbers on a sheet that can be you know moved here and there and so forth you know we all know that shit right we, we all know that shit that's not the point the point is to actually go and do something about it and that's what this book is very much about she also really manages to explain not to explain but to show in a way how how as long as you are in that system as we all are how it is so easy and so tempting to fall into these um in the into these like predestined routes and go the predestined careers and accept that whole thing and just do a little and you might get a little benefit and so forth and you you can get like an acceptable level of life through that uh, which, you know, brings me back to that Malazan, uh, Malazan quote of uh, Emperor Kellen, but it's like, acceptable levels of suffering. Who the fuck says that? This is the same thing. It's like, acceptable is not good. Acceptable is what the system wants us to go for. Because it's easier. It's like least resistance kind of thing, right? And that's that's what I so love about this book it's not like i i kid you not I, like i read it today and i i started crying at the end it's not exactly a super cute emotional sob story kind of end the point that makes me cry is that something someone at least has the guts to write a story where they people realize that we need to fucking burn the whole thing down and start fresh start new pick up the pieces of who we are and make make something out of that by ourselves because that's the other thing agency i've spoken about agency so much and i feel it's a very very important thing in general and with this book it is so much the thing there is once again the idea of having agency being able to actually to to want something and then to actually make that thing happen and not just fulfilling a larger entity's wishes or you know demands and so much of our life is very much about fulfilling other people's expectations fulfilling the expectations of the system whatever system fulfilling all these like demands and not being the people that we want to be or not even thinking about who we really want to be and what we really want to do and that's the other thing within that story that works so well is like um, the idea of names. So I said before, this is told from a first-person narrative, right? Narrator. And we only know their name, like their, their last name, which is Dietz. We only know their last name until the very, very last chapter where someone, once Dietz, our narrator, steps out of the system and decides to do something new, do something else. That's when they get their first name back. Well, someone calls them by their first name and they once again become a person. So the idea of dehumanization through the system is something that is very much in there, but in a subtle way. It's never mentioned fully. It's just like at the end when they suddenly get called by their first name again, you realize that 
Yeah, that's a point. Everyone else is also just... All the soldiers are usually just called by their last names. They're just like, you know, Jones, Dietz, Munoz, all of the... That's, yeah, you know, you get the point. Another thing is, when I said, like, this is feminist, it's also, like... Um, the very, very subtle way, or not, so the way in which things like gender or ethnicity don't play a role in this story. And just like how people from all kinds of places and all kinds of, you know, backgrounds are just there. They're just soldiers. They lose that. That's not what defines them. And it's not what should define people in general, but we see that and I feel this is important that just like having it written down, it sounds so stupid, right? It, it sounds so stupid to actually point that out. But the fact that you have a military story where things like gender and ethnicity don't play a role. And people are just people or soldiers in that case. That's super important still because we're not at the place where this is reality. We still think too much in those categories. And it, sometimes it is just really refreshing in a way to read a book where that just doesn't you know play a role it's like anyway i've been talking way too long about this already my point remains go read that book it will change your life it will also entertain you but it will also change your life and you hopefully go out there and say you know what let's burn down the system that's a cool thing we need to do it and with those sort of revolutionary <laughs> sentiments, I hope you had a great weekend. And I'll talk to you tomorrow about um, the end game of Toll the Hounds. Until then, cheers. <laughs>